guys, I'm Lauren. Welcome back to my channel. It's so good to see you guys. Thank you guys for popping in. Today we're going to be talking about Maranta Say, which includes Maranta, Calathea, Stromanthe, and Tenanthe. Um, hopefully I am saying all of those names right. We never know these days. So basically what I'm planning on doing is just taking you around the room, showing you my entire collection, and how I take care of that. And if that sounds like something that you'd enjoy, stick around. Don't forget to subscribe if you're all about the planty awesomeness, and let's get into it. Okay, so over here we have my green Maranta. I've definitely shown this one to you before. So this is the green Maranta here, also known as the Rabbit Foot Tracks. This one in particular, I did a whole big repotting thing. It is a very, very large plant, as you can see. Um, it definitely likes to grow. It grows a lot, and it grows very quickly. The only thing is, is if you chop it back um, after it's put out big foliage, it takes a while to start putting out the big foliage again. You can see here these leaves were huge. I chopped it back. And then it just started pushing out smaller and smaller leaves. It will sometimes do this after a repot as well. So if you have one and you're struggling with this, that's probably why. I do have it in a cash pot and whenever I feel the top is dry, I will water it. And then I just leave a little bit of a reservoir in the bottom to kind of evaporate off. But I do have a very hot and naturally humid home. So that's probably part of the reason. It does have crispy tips. I do just use tap water, um, but these crispy tips is, is not because of the tap water. It's because I let it dry out too much. You can see it actually lost a leaf over here as well. I'm one of those people I like to keep it real. I don't go chopping everything off and snipping it. This is what it is, as you can see. And then over here we have the variegated version of the same one. So you can see here, it's got the same issue. I just let it dry out too much over here. But, and sometimes it will get kind of a red variegation in it. And you can see here some of the splotches. It's just a really, really cool plant. This one has been much, um, a much slower grower comparatively. I would say out of the two of these, the normal one is much easier to grow. This one has been more finicky than any of the other plants that I've had, honestly. Um, so if there is one that gives Calathea and Maranta a bad rap, honestly, it's probably this one from my experience. All right, let's scoot back over here. Over here is a Calathea orbifolia. This is what the foliage is supposed to look like here. And it's really beautiful with its green and silver ribs. You can kind of see there some of the markings. It's actually really beautiful. Um, I had this in a greenhouse environment where it was getting very high humidity. And I take care of this the same way I take care of the Maranta. Um, where it's got kind of the cash po underneath there. Um, but when I moved it from the high humidity to the low humidity, it put out this leaf and this leaf. And you can see it protested both times, one right after the other. And that's how this damage came to be about. It is pushing out a new leaf now a few months later. And it is looking much happier. So I think this one is not going to have any issues. It's going to come out without any damage. Uh, so I'm pretty excited about that. Let's move on to the next one. All right, so this one right here, I actually do not remember the name of. I am so sorry, I will put it on the screen. It has kind of a silver and green sheen on it. It is pushing out new leaves under here, which is pretty amazing. Um, it comes in very light colored, as you can see there, and then it gets darker and less lime green colored as it matures and as it hardens off, so. But it has your typical Calathea uh, fanning sort of growth pattern. So I really like it. It's been very, very easy. This is a prime example of what I was trying to show you where I have the cash po sitting in and then I always have a reservoir of water underneath. Um, over here is my Calathea mosaica. It is on the struggle bus. It's been on the struggle bus since I got it a year ago and it has been struggling ever since. It is a very, very beautiful plant. Other people have told me it is a very easy plant. I have not had that experience, but I also got a plant that was very tiny and only had two leaves and came with a bunch of issues that I've been recovering from ever since. It does put out a new leaf every few months or so, but I think honestly, I need to just suck it up and get a better, a better, healthier plant. 
Okay, so up here is conveniently where a lot of my say are, so let me just kind of show you what I have going on up here. Um, over here is my red veined Maranta. This leaf got a little bit torn. My uh, two-year-old found some scissors. It was quite thrilled to be able to help mommy with her plants. <laughs> Um, but it has this beautiful pink veination. This was the first Maranta that I got and it grew beautifully. Over here you can see that this is a younger leaf that's not getting as much light. And I do have this in a self-watering pot, but I use it as a reservoir like I have shown you before. And that's just kind of what works for me. This is one of two plants. The other one is right over here. Um, I am going to combine them. They were cuttings from an original plant that has since passed on. So I'm going to combine these eventually. And then right back here is my Calathea Majestica. This is the White Star, I believe. And as you can tell, it has this beautiful pink foliage. If you followed me for a while, then you would have seen it. Um, for this particular Calathea, if it gets too little light, the pink in the front goes away. And if it gets too much light, um, then you end up with just this white foliage as well. So this one, you kind of have to be a little bit more finicky as far as what light it gets. But you can see back here that even if it doesn't have that pink, it'll have a little bit of pink here and it's still a very, very beautiful plant. Um, and they all have these beautiful dark red backs. Um, I also keep this in a self-watering pot. And then you can see the tips are a little crispy. This is because I water my plant with straight tap water. All of these Calatheas get tap water and they are thriving, doing just fine. So, and I get all of my Calatheas and my Marantisae, um, in general, I usually get them smaller. I think I've only gotten one as an actual large plant. All of them have been smaller plants that I have grown to be as big as they are, or I have propagated them. So, there's that. But as you can see, I can't recommend this plant enough. It's so gorgeous. It's so easygoing. Once it starts to dry out on top, when I feel the soil... You know, I'll give it some water. I call it good. I don't let it sit in a puddle. I just have water evaporating underneath the roots for it. And it grows really well. It is a fantastic plant. All right. Uh, another fantastic plant is this Calathea roseopicta, I believe. I always get this one confused with the medallion. Um, I think this is the medallion. And then this is the Roseopicta. Um, if you don't stare at Calathea for very long, they do kind of look exactly the same. But as you can see, there is a slight difference, especially here. This one has a tendency to stay smaller as well, the medallion, while the rosy gets bigger. So, but you can see... It's got quite a bit of variegation on it, and this one is the same way. Uh, too much light, it will lose the pink, and then not enough light, and it won't make the pink, in my experience. But you can see it's got the pink background here, and for the little variegated portion right here, it's actually got a couple of different colors. It's just such a cool plant. And then I love this pink center vein. The leaves feel very shiny and waxy as well. I really like that about them. Um, this is a baby Calathea orbifolia. I actually chopped, this plant came with a lot of issues. It had some fungus issues and whatnot. Um, so I chopped it up and I took the corms from inside and I divided it into two plants and this is one of them. So it's producing a lot of new growth here. And then this is actually the other one. So you can see right here how it's supposed to look. Where it's got that beautiful silver shine in the center there. Almost like little silver paintbrush marks. But then it's got some deeper green. It's just got some really fantastic shading. It just pushed out this new leaf here. So I'm really excited. It went from zero leaves just straight up chopped to the base and then pushed these out. So I'm really loving it. I think it's fantastic. And then back here we have my Lemon Lime Maranta. Um, this was big and beautiful last year. I totally chopped it up and propagated it. Those propagations then got thrips. So this plant never got those extra cuttings put back in the pot with it. And it is much, much thinner and looks really terrible. You can see this leaf has been overwatered and is about to go. I really wanted to show it anyway, not just because... Um, we can make bad decisions about plants, 
but I really wanted to show you the coloration and the veination. This plant has come down in price quite a bit. I think you can get a full pot for about $14, $15 now online. Um, I'm sure you can find it even cheaper elsewhere. So definitely if you get a chance to get this plant, it is beautiful and totally worth it. I'm personally going to be buying another one because I loved it so much. And when it flowers in the springtime, late spring, early summer, it makes these most beautiful little teeny tiny purple flowers. Um, and they look like mini orchids. They're really cool. So if you get a chance, it's awesome. It's really worth it. So let's come over here and check out these calathea. This area is struggling a little bit because I put a new grow light here and it's a little bit stronger than it was just with this little light on here. Um, it likes the window light better, honestly, than it does this grow light, but this is where it's got to be for now. Um, this is my Calathea White Fusion. It's pushing out beautiful... Uh, let me see if I can get you in here a little bit better. There you go. So it's pushing out beautiful white new foliage. Um, you can tell it just pushed out this leaf right here which is just so incredible. There's barely any green on it at all. But unfortunately, because of that grow light, some of the older foliage is getting burned just from being too close to it. Um, unfortunately, I didn't notice right away, so I had to move it kind of last minute. But every single leaf is different. They also have the Calathea Yellow Fusion out now, which is yellow and green instead of white. I personally prefer the white fusion, but... Um, you know, each to their own, and it's a new popular, really cool plant. So if you really like yellow variegation, it's a fairly inexpensive one that's new on the market that you might enjoy. This is a terrarium calathea, and it will not get very big. That's another thing, like you saw the bigger calathea I showed you a few minutes ago. This will never get that big. It's always going to stay smaller. It's always going to be kind of a terrarium plant. It's never really going to outgrow this situation here. And then this over here is a Calathea macoyana. I am struggling with this plant. Um, I got it really tiny. It pushes out a new leaf for me. You can see right there. Whenever I give it almost bright direct light, it grows really great for me. But if I take it out of this terrarium setting, then it gets really cranky and starts crisping up on me and I lose two leaves every time. So I have to keep it in this type of situation and then give it the direct light at the same time. So this one's a little bit finicky. From what I understand though, a bigger one is not so finicky. So if you're gonna buy a Calathea macoyana, I highly recommend that you get a bigger one. It's also called a peacock Calathea and you can see just how pretty it is. And they do have the red on the backs, but you can see that the variegation is a little bit different. It's not a solid red. So it's also called the Cathedral Calathea, I believe, the Window Calathea, something along those lines. But it's, it's a really, really beautiful plant. I have seen big specimens of this plant, and it's mind-blowingly awesome, which is why I haven't gotten rid of this picky pain in the butt. <laughs> but it's, it's an amazing plant. It's so pretty. So, and you can see the new leaf is unfurling right here. I'm sorry, I have, um, I don't know if you can see it right there. There you go. Sorry about that. I have condensation because I forgot to take off the lid um, and allow some of this water to evaporate before I came over here to film it for you. So that's why there is condensation there. But you can see it's got a new leaf coming in, the first one in a couple of months, and then it'll be doing good. This is a heart leaf fern sitting in here as well, and it's popping off like crazy. It too got a little bit of sunburn um, just from these new lights that I put here. I had to put them here because I have... Um, a new raffidophora that I put over here. It's pushed out four new leaves. It's incredible. This video is not about that. Um, but I wanted to explain like why this light had to be here. And then I have my micans on a board here, um, which you can watch a whole separate other video about why that is the way it is. But this whole tank and this Calathea situation has suffered a little bit since I have done that. And just something to be aware of. But if you see any burning tips on your Calathea in your area, you just pull them back. It's really simple. Just give them a little bit less light. They'll acclimate just fine. Did you think I was done? Because I'm definitely not done. <laughs> um, this is a Calathea ornata. It has these beautiful pink stripes and very, very glossy, thick leaves. You can see that they do not stay tiny, even if you get them tiny. This has been sized up twice since last summer. I've had to repot it because it's outgrown its pot. 
and this is the newest leaf. It gets very, very dark foliage in the right light with pink veins. Um, hopefully the pink is popping up for you. You can see a little bit better on this more uh, deep green. And then this is a newer one where it's getting better lighting and it's got darker foliage. And it's like a deep, deep evergreen versus this lighter green, which is just so cool. This is also... A newer leaf so you can see the newer leaves have more green like most calathea they'll be brighter more vibrant more neon colored and then they do deepen and darken as they get older too this is a calathea rufa barba um, these are fuzzy velvety I have definitely talked about these before I don't know if you can really see the velvet there you go you could kind of see it a little bit there Yes, it's very, very velvety foliage. Um, there's two plants in this little pot, and I'm doing the same situation that I have with all of the other ones, with the water kept underneath but not sitting in a puddle, water when dry. Um, it's getting really great light from the grow light, and then these lights are actually making it pop out like crazy too. And then it's got fuzzy patio which is something you don't hear unless it's a philodendron, but these totally do have a fuzzy petiole if you are into that. So this one I actually got as a bigger plant. I got it in a six inch pot. Um, that plant suffered because I was moving things around and had in-laws and stuff coming at the time and I was setting up my plant room and I ended up just taking this bare rooted plant along with its very big other plant and putting it in water for two weeks and the entire thing suffered horribly. So uh, I ended up dividing this as like an insurance plant and this one completely and totally thrived and I will show you the parent one in just a second. This over here is the parent one which was doing so well for a long time and then it got thrips and it's a very big plant. It's actually doing much better than it was. I have it in a completely like separate quarantine zone. Um, so that's kind of what's going on with that. And you can see it's doing all right. It's surviving. Um, but it's definitely not as happy as the other one. But I don't regret this purchase. It is a fabulous plant. Highly recommend Calathea rufabarba. And back over here we have a Tenanthe Burl Marks. You can see it's got like a fishbone pattern on it. It's just got really, really cool veination. It does not get as dark on the backs. It can if you give it a lower light. Um, but for the most part, it stays lighter. And this is the new foliage. You can see that it comes out the center of these fan-like um, situations. So it's just right there. It's so pretty. And then I like how they have like these little spikes at the end. Like They're not pokey or anything, but it's just kind of cool. It kind of gives me like Alocasia Stingray vibes. Just the little, little tips like that. I don't know. It's just a fun quirky little feature of the plant and I really enjoy it. Um, the only thing that is not so great is if you don't give it enough light and enough humidity they will tear themselves while they're unfurling so that's a little bit disappointing. And they are more glossy when they first unfurl and then they harden off. They're still very thick glossy foliage but they do get more silver and darker as they get older and more mature. So it's just kind of cool to, to note. It's a really awesome plant. Um, as I've been saying about all of them. And then over here is a rattlesnake calathea. This one is kind of suffering a little bit because I keep forgetting to water it. So you can tell here that it's got foliage that's really not happy, just being dried out way, way too much. But here is what it's supposed to look like. There you go, you can see. It's just a really, really cool, beautiful plant. It's got like these spots. It almost looks like it's got a vine, like it's growing up the center and then it kind of rotates like the bigger and the smaller. Big, small, big, small, big. Oh, this one's missing a small, but you get what I mean. I don't know. I just really like that pattern. And it's kind of on all of them. This type of variegation is just so cool. And then again, it's, it's a thicker, glossier leaf. And this one has a very nice like, I don't know how to explain it, like a wave. 
on the side like they're all wavy like that a lot of the other calathea are very smooth and round um mirantisae in general tend to be very smooth and round but this rattlesnake calathea totally has like a little wave to it which i really love um also i'm using calathea interchangeably with gopersia because um, most of them have been reclassified as a gopersia but um they're not really specifying which ones exactly and then they're changing the names entirely and most things have not updated to that so this is just a rattlesnake calathea if you google that it will pop up most of these i'm just giving you the common names for um that way you can actually find them online but just something to note they are in line with Gopersha as well. I think over here is my last one. Unfortunately, it's not like the most happy looking one. Um, it does have crispy tips. This is a Stromanthi Trio Star. You can see they're very spear-like here and they look like paintings. Um, these leaves are actually much more pink than the camera is picking up. Here is a new leaf unfurling and yes, that vibrant pink is not edited in. It really is that beautiful. And every single leaf is like a painting on furling. Unfortunately, as the leaves get older, they tend to get more finicky and they'll get crispy. When you have a very big full plant, it's not very noticeable. But you can see that most of the top ones, the newer foliage, is coming in perfect. I personally feel that the crispy mitts are because I have it in my natural 50% humidity and I'm using tap water. If I wanted perfect tips, then I could probably increase my humidity and start using filtered water. I don't recommend distilled water. I know a lot of people say use distilled water, but distilled is devoid of nutrients. So if you have, if you're going to use distilled water, make sure that you are adding nutrients to it as well. Um, just like a hydroponic fertilizer. And then that might work better for you, but that's not something that I'm willing to do for a little tiny plant. So I'm just dealing with the crispy tips personally. But that is a way for you to take care of it for yourself if that's something that's very concerning to you. But I really just wanted to show you how pretty these are. Um, it's actually got a new leaf unfurling here as well. And you can see, let me go under here for you. So they have that fanning, fanning habitat down there. Um, and that's just kind of how... That's their growth pattern. They just fan out from the center more and more and more. And there's actually, there is three plants in here and that's how it came. And, and I forgot to talk about what all of these are in. All of these are actually in a moss, bark, charcoal, perlite, and worm casting mix. I do have to repot these um, and I can do a soil video for that whenever I get all the substrates in for that. But yeah, this is definitely a really beautiful one. I think you would really enjoy it. It gets a bad rap of being a diva, but honestly, I think that's because people expect perfection from their plants. And this is not one of those that is going to be perfect unless you yourself are perfect, which most of us aren't. And that's okay. But as you can see, it looks very, very beautiful with the newer foliage and I am doing the bare minimum for this plant. Thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed seeing this Calathea collection and all of the Marantisae and the Marantisae family. Hopefully this makes them a little bit less intimidating and a little bit more fun. And maybe I showed you one or two for you to add to your collection, um, maybe add to your wish list. So I know I am always constantly finding new ones to add to mine. <laughs> They are just so such wonderful plants that get such a bad reputation. So anyway, I will let you go. I hope you have an amazing day and I will see you in the next one. Bye!